I don't blame anybody but myself, but I never expected it to end up in the public realm. But it would not have ended up in the public realm had I not written it, so the fault is mine. Tonight, breaking news, Parliament set to sit in just over 48 hours as the fallout continues from multiple leaked text messages about the Prime Minister, where Scott Morrison is called a liar, a fraud, a psycho and a horrible, horrible person. It's Sunday the 6th of February, you're watching 6 News also tonight. There's a plateauing of those numbers, there's a reduction in hospitalisations and there's a reduction in, in, in our ICU capacity. We provided that information to the public um, and I think there's a lot here in New South Wales right now to be optimistic about. COVID cases trend downwards here at home while overseas more European nations ease their restrictions. Ireland and France some of the latest to relax rules even as Omicron continues to spread rapidly right across the continent. And the fallout continues overseas after TV host Whoopi Goldberg was suspended from US talk show The View after saying that the Holocaust wasn't about race reaction now coming in from former co-hosts and the general public. Good evening everyone, thanks for tuning in. Really good to be back in the studio for the first time in oh, about six weeks now. Later tonight, we will be revealing our next big guest on Uncensored Political Wise, that is. And of course, in sport, Justin Langer resigning as the Australian cricket coach following days of speculation about his future, all despite him leading Australia to a recent T20 World Cup win and an Ashes victory. But first tonight, the federal parliament is set to sit in just over 48 hours as the fallout continues from multiple leaked text messages about the Prime Minister. Scott Morrison has been called a liar, a fraud, a psycho and a horrible, horrible person, with Deputy PM Barnaby Joyce even offering his resignation for what he said only days after telling the minister who allegedly sent texts about the PM to Gladys Berejiklian to come forward. The Nationals leader unreservedly apologised to Morrison Morrison saying he accepted that. Port Lincoln Holmes breaks down everything you need to know. Parliament is just days away from returning with the Morrison government right now dealing with not one but two leaked text messages. First Channel 10 reported that the former New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian described Scott Morrison as a horrible, horrible person, while an unnamed minister is reported to have described the Prime Minister as a fraud. The minister is even more scathing, describing you as a fraud and, quote, a complete psycho. Does this exchange surprise you? And what do you think it tells us? Well, I don't know who you're referring to um, or the basis of what you've put to me, um, but I obviously don't agree with it and I don't think that's my record. At the time, Nationals leader and Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce called on the minister responsible to identify themselves. But now, just days later, his own text messages have been leaked. I don't blame anybody but myself, but I never expected it to end up in the public realm. But it would not have ended up in the public realm had I not written it, so the fault is mine. Nine reports that the messages were sent in March 2021 via a third party because the MP did not have the phone number of Brittany Higgins. In the messages, he said that from his observations, Scott Morrison was a liar and that he has never trusted him. Joyce was not the party leader at the time and yesterday spoke publicly about what he said, revealing he even offered his resignation, but that was not accepted. My view from the backbench about the Prime Minister was based on assumption and commentary, not from a one-on-one -on -one working relationship. And from a one-on-one -on -one working relationship, I found a man who has honoured every agreement that he has made with me and who I have noted has honoured every agreement that he's made with others from both sides of the political fence. This isn't a government, it's a shambles. It's a shambles full of dysfunction and disunity. It's a shambles which isn't looking after the interests of Australians because they're obsessed by their internal hatreds and their dysfunction. When it came to light a couple of days ago, uh, I rang the Prime Minister immediately. Uh, I apologised. Uh, he accepted my apology. I offered my resignation and he did not accept my resignation. And that in itself is a statement of a person of greater character that is not 
one of a person of any form of vindictiveness or peak or a sense of retribution. Joyce was scheduled to appear on the ABC this morning, but pulled out shortly after yesterday's press conference. This all comes as an election looms, with Australians potentially heading to the polls as soon as next month, with large crowds gathering outside Parliament House in opposition to vaccine mandates and COVID restrictions. Lincoln Holmes, 6 News. And stick around because as we mentioned a few minutes ago, later tonight we will be revealing the big name political guest that we'll be talking to on Tuesday night for Uncensored. Patreon subscribers can find out right now via patreon.com forward slash 6newsau. Staying in Canberra, crowds have continued to gather to protest COVID vaccine mandates in Australia. Crowds gathered at Old Parliament House following days of rallies at the Capitol inspired by the truckers' convoy in Canada. Now, just on that, GoFundMe has announced that the fundraiser for the trucker convoy overseas has been removed from their platform, the company saying in a statement that it supports peaceful protests and, quote, we believe that was the intention of the Freedom Convoy 2022 fundraiser when it was first created, but added that, quote, we now have evidence from law enforcement that the previously peaceful demonstration has become an occupation with police reports of violence and other unlawful activity. Well, back home now, the Aboriginal flag will fly permanently atop the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The Sydney Morning Herald reports that Premier Dominic Perrottet has directed bureaucrats to find a way to install a third flagpole at the top of the bridge. He was reportedly advised recently that the process could take up to a year, but believes it can be achieved faster than that. The first advice I received is that that would take two years. Um, Two years. I mean, in the 1920s, it took it took nine years to build the Harbour Bridge, but apparently today it takes two years to put a flagpole on top of the Harbour Bridge. I mean, I'll climb up there myself and put it up uh, if I need to. I mean, this is. The Herald also reports that the Aboriginal flag flies in place of the New South Wales flag on 19 separate days throughout the year with the national and state flags seen every other day. Meanwhile, COVID-19 cases in multiple states in Australia are continuing the trend downwards and so are hospitalisations. That's given some people hope that Australia is officially past the Omicron peak, while overseas a number of European nations have eased or are planning to ease restrictions, even with the virus continuing to spread rapidly across the continent. Now, these countries include Denmark, France, the Netherlands, Italy, Switzerland, Sweden, Sweden, the UK and Ireland. The World Health Organization's Europe director says the continent could soon enter a long period of tranquility in the pandemic. The BBC reporting that Dr Hans Klug said that this period of higher protection, protection rather, should be seen as a quote ceasefire that could bring us enduring peace. Well, former US Vice President Mike Pence says that Donald Trump was wrong to claim that he could have overturned the results of the 2020 election. The Associated Press reports that in a speech to a gathering of conservative of the Conservative Federalist Society in Florida, Pence spoke about what the former US president had said regarding his own actions on January 6 and what he potentially could and couldn't have done. Take a look. I heard this week that President Trump said I had the right to overturn the election. President Trump is wrong. I had no right to overturn the election. The presidency belongs to the American people and the American people alone. And frankly, there is no idea more un-American than the notion that any one person could choose the American president. Now, Pence has defended the actions he took early last year multiple times, even saying previously that he believes he and Trump will likely never see eye to eye what happened on that day. And staying in the US, the fallout continues after TV host Whoopi Goldberg was suspended from ABC talk show The View after saying that the Holocaust wasn't about race. Now, during the program, she claimed that it was instead about man's inhumanity to man, leading to condemnation from the Auschwitz Memorial and StopAntiSemitism.org. And tonight, reactioning, reaction is continuing to come in from former co-hosts and the general public. U.S. correspondent Jackson Gosnell has the details. Leo monitoring many stories here in the U.S., including fallout on The View as co-host Whoopi Goldberg is suspended for at least two weeks. 
We did learn that she made remarks about the Holocaust, saying that it wasn't about race, which, as you would expect, sent many people raging to Twitter and other social media platforms. Some called for her firing. Others said she should just resign or step aside. Well, ABC could not avert the situation any longer. They addressed it by saying they put her on suspension for two weeks. Allegedly, some on the show are furious that she's having to step away for two weeks. But I wanted to also let you know that several organizations have accepted the apology that she issued. According to People Magazine, the Anti-Defamation League accepts Whoopi Goldberg's apology after what she calls a misinformed Holocaust statement. It's also worth noting that Megan McCain, the former View co-star with Whoopi Goldberg, is slamming her, basically saying there's nothing Whoopi could do to get fired, so she's not calling for her firing. But they are alleging, along with so many people, I say they as in people on the show, that Whoopi's character and her uh, really integrity has just been seen by the situation. Although it was misinformed, people are really upset with her. They don't know if they can trust her anymore or really see her as uh, the person that they once did. So it remains to be seen what happens as a result of this situation. Whoopi is expected to return in about two weeks to the show. Again, she's apologized. I saw that Mike Bloomberg tweeted saying that uh, he basically knows Whoopi. He knows that she wouldn't mean anything hurtfully. Uh, I saw that she did like the tweet. So remains to be seen what exactly will happen, but we are expecting her to return in two weeks. I'll continue to keep you updated here for the very latest. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Gosnell News. Reporting from here in the U.S., I'm Jackson Gosnell. Back to you. Well, changing pace into sport now, Justin Langer has resigned as the Australian head cricket coach. Langer stepped down just a day after the Cricket Australia board met to decide his fate. Nine newspapers reporting that in recent months, players and support staff stage a full-scale mutiny over what was described as an intense and volatile micromanagement style. He is now leaving despite the T20 World Cup and Ashes victories. Langer's contract was set to end in June. And in the AFL, meanwhile, Essendon has granted Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody a leave of absence. In a statement, the club said that they had been continuing to support McDonald, Tip and Woody as he deals with personal matters, with the 28-year-old also managing a calf injury this pre-season. Josh, Josh Mahoney, the general manager of football at the Bombers, said that, quote, the well-being of our players and staff is always our priority when guiding our decision making, adding that he is a, quote, much loved member of our football club and we will continue to care for him and fully support Anthony throughout this time. We look forward to his return in the future. And now is Ivan Amelie with the what's coming up later tonight on WAMN News. Thanks, Leo. Tonight on WAM News, as Term 1 starts, several Perth schools have been hit with COVID, raising questions if WA is ready for Variant X. An exclusive with Dr Andrew Miller on this looming issue. Perth braces for months-long food shortages as issues with eastern state supply lines continue. Chinese New Year has hit Perth as the Chonghua Association put on a festival to announce the Year of the Tiger. Perth Children's Hospital's underground car park has been shut to sick children and their families. Plus, Dr Mark Duncan-Smith's comment. Join us tonight on the WMN News Facebook page and YouTube channel. All right, thanks both Ivan and Melly there. Now to tomorrow's weather forecast right across the country. Partly cloudy, 28 degrees in Brisbane. A chance of showers at 22 in Sydney, 21 in the nation's capital, Canberra. 29 and sunny in Melbourne, 23 over in Hobart. Getting to a top of 32 in Adelaide, 31 in Alice Springs, meanwhile. 22 in Perth and in Darwin, thunderstorms a top of 29. And just before we go tonight, as we teased early, we have a pretty big political guest on Uncensored this Tuesday, Adam Bent. He is the leader of the Greens, the first time we've actually spoken to the current leader of any political party 
and anyone from the Greens. So Adam Bant will be speaking to us Tuesday night, 8pm Eastern on Uncensored, and we'll be discussing plenty of issues, whether that's things in the news recently, uh, potential rise of micro parties, minor parties and independence this election, and also some of his thoughts on how the major parties are doing, Liberal and Labor. So that is Tuesday, 8pm Eastern on Uncensored, right here on our YouTube channel. And that is Six News for this Sunday evening. You can start today with the latest headlines by heading to our website, sixnewsau.com, and by following us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Lit. Just search Six News AU to find us. I'm Leonardo Puglisi. Thanks for your company. Good night.